Welcome to Looking at the Markets with David Modell. Today's topic is 500% gains in leveraged ETFs. Is it possible? Hmm. Well, let's explore, see if it is possible. Well, I do think it's possible. A better question is, is that realistic? Well, first of all, what is an ETF? Just for a review, that's an exchange traded fund. It, it's kind of like a mutual fund, except you trade it like a stock or you can trade it like a stock. Uh, mutual funds are oftentimes priced once per day, whereas ETFs, you can, uh, you can get them priced and you can buy and sell them uh, anytime during the trading day, much like a stock. All right, so this is an example uh, or a few examples of some of the more popular ETFs and especially leveraged ETFs. And leverage, just a, a really quick review of leverage, uh, that means you can um, control a large amount of equities with a smaller amount of money. So instead of a one-to-one -one correspondence between money and equities, you might have a two-to-one or three-to-one correspondence. All right, so for example, uh, if you have something like SDS, this, uh, that's an example of a leveraged uh, ETF and it's triple leveraged. And so you're controlling three times uh, the amount uh, as you would if you just went short uh, the S&P 500. All right. And by the way, I, I always like to put these sources whenever I can, whenever possible, so I can give credit. And uh, it, this is from ETFDB.com. All right. So uh, some of the more popular leveraged ETFs would include SDS. That's the ticker symbol. And that's ultra short, three times short uh, for the S&P 500. So for example, if you were to purchase ticker symbol SH, that has a one-to-one -one correspondence. That's one times short the S&P 500. But this one go, would go uh, this in the same direction as SH, except it would go three times in that direction. It moves three times as fast. Uh, you've got NUGT, which is uh, the gold miners bull, bullish on gold miners. All right, and that's a three times leveraged ETF. Uh, you've got your SSO, which is leveraged for the S&P 500. Um, you've got your, uh, you know, you, all kinds of leveraged ETFs. Uh, you've got, uh, you know, triple leveraged for, uh, for long uh, financials. You've got triple leveraged uh, bullish for uh, the Qs, which is uh, the tech sector. Uh, so on and so forth. X, SPXU, that's a popular one. And that's triple leveraged short for the S&P 500, kind of kind of the same as SDS or pretty similar to it. Uh, and this one's for large crap, large, large cap growth. Uh, you get the idea. These are just a few examples. Now let's look at the performance here. Um, yes, it is possible to get 500% gains uh, in leveraged ETFs, for example, NUGT year to date uh, gains or profits of 536% approximately. All right. So yes, it is possible. But that's if you got in at exactly the right time and if you held on all this time. And but what if you got in at the wrong time? What if you bought it just today? Well, let's look at the one day change for NUGT. That's nine and a half percent loss in just one day. So is this type of gain realistic? Well, my opinion is no, but we're going to continue to talk about that. And as you can see, these things, these triple leveraged ETFs are big, big movers. All right. Um, you know, you, you look at a SPXU, it's down almost 20 percent for the year. Uh, you look at uh, you know SDS, it's down almost 18% per the for the year. Uh, SSO is up a little bit over 14% for the year. Compare that to SPY, the spiders, which is up uh, about 7% for the year so far. 
So these triple leveraged, uh, you know, instruments, these ETFs, they're they're big movers, and you have to be really careful with them for that reason. But there's an even bigger issue with leveraged ETFs, and uh, this is a pretty good explanation of contango. And I got this from Investor Junkie. <laughs> it's a cool name, interesting name. Dot com. So let's, uh, I'm just going to read this really quickly because it gives a better explanation than I probably would if I tried to paraphrase it. Uh, perhaps the biggest issue with investing in commodity ETFs, uh, and not just commodity, but all ETFs, but you know, right now they're talking about that uh, type of ETF. Uh, biggest issue perhaps is contango. What is that? Well, contango is an issue that comes into play with any investment that is futures based and these leveraged ETFs they're mostly futures based contango is a situation in which the near month futures are actually less expensive than those that expire later on as a result when the roll process is underway it can easily result in selling low and buying high this is a situation that investors don't want to be in since it means losses. Yeah, so they're constantly uh, selling the, the current near month futures and rolling it, uh, they're rolling it forward. They're selling the current month futures and then buying the more expensive, um, you know, further out month futures. And that means that, again, you're, you're selling, um, at a lower price and then buying the more expensive ones, which is going to cause losses whenever they roll forward like that. Uh, contango becomes more obvious when investing with leveraged ETFs. That's what we're talking about today. Leveraged ETFs are ETFs that are designed to magnify gains or losses compared to an index. So for example, if you in invest in ProShares Ultra S&P 500 SSO, and you saw that on the previous slide, that's designed to give two times the return of the underlying S&P 500 index. Yeah, so in theory, um, if let's say SPY, the spiders went up, uh, you know, a dollar, then SSO should go up two dollars. It should, but here's the issue. The issue is this, every day the indexing is reset since the ETF is futures based. Over time, your returns do not match S&P 500 multiplied by 2. Because of this, a leveraged ETF should only be used as a short term up to a few weeks at most, and I don't even think I would go that far out, a short term investment. So thanks to uh, InvestorJunkie.com for explaining that really well. And so, yeah, they're constantly uh, rolling they're rolling forward. They're selling the, the current futures contract and then uh, purchasing a more expensive, uh, you know, further out contract. And so you're losing a little bit of money every day, every day. Even if the trade goes in the direction you want it to, you're losing money, losing money because it's futures based and they're constantly rolling out. And uh, I found another source. This is uh, from seekingalpha.com, an article on Seeking Alpha, which has some good articles there. I like to read them from time to time. And uh, this shows how bad it can get. All right, uh, so uh, SPY, the spiders, and that, that's an ETF that's not leveraged. It just tracks one time the uh, S&P 500 index, and that's the brown line, okay, over here. And you can see, you know, it goes down and up, not too far. It's pretty moderate and actually uh, during this time frame from uh, about 2010 to about 2012 uh, we can see it, it didn't go very far it kind of ended up where it started it's pretty flat but it had its downs and its ups all right now what if you had purchased uh, X SPXU which is triple leveraged three times short uh, the S&P 500 all right and so that's the blue purplish blue line all right so as you can see when uh, the S&P 500 went down, it went up, and it went up, yeah, I guess you could say about three times as much, what you would expect, okay? But look what happened. And so in the short term, yeah, maybe you could maybe you could use that, possibly. But 
look what happens over time if you held on to it. Down, 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 down. Huge loss. Look at that. It ended up about 30% down. Yeah, that's, that's a really massive loss. Uh, now, what if you had gone the other way, though? Uh, what if you had purchased UPRO, U-P-R-O, ticker symbol, three times leveraged long or bullish on the S&P 500? All right, so that's the opposite trade, and that's the green line here. All right, well, it went down, but then it went up, and you'd expect it to... You'd think that if it's... If the uh, SPXU uh, finished on this chart down, you'd expect UPRO to finish way up, right? Well, it doesn't work like that. Because of Contango, that also finished about 25, let's say 25% down. So we've got, <laughs> in this time frame on the chart, you've got the three times short S&P 500 leveraged ETF finishing down about 30%. And yet the triple leveraged long or bullish S&P 500 finished down about 25%. You lost big time either way. And that's because of Contango. So even if the underlying finishes flat, you lose, you can lose either way and you can lose big time. So what's the takeaway from all this? Leveraged ETFs might be okay for extremely nimble day traders. And I say might. I don't even necessarily recommend it for that. But since they tend to um, roll forward every day, a lot of these ETFs, maybe within the same day before the closing of the trading day, you might be able to use it, maybe. Uh, but really, why deal with Contango when you can also get good leverage with call and put options? For my money, it's the smarter way to go. And I mean, options are the smarter way to go. And yes, options have their own issues. They have time decay, um, eating away at them if you hold on to them for too long. Uh, and, and the underlying doesn't go the way you want it to go. Sure. But at least you're not dealing with Contango at least uh, you don't have these negative surprises either way. So, and I've made other videos uh, about the advantages and disadvantages of options, but I would, I would strongly recommend against holding on to leveraged ETFs uh, for any real length of time. And even if you're gonna use them for a short length of time, just be aware that you can, you can have very negative surprises with them. Uh, my opinion is if if you don't truly understand them and really know what you're doing, I would avoid leveraged ETFs. So if you need some help with this, if you'd like some more information about ETFs, stocks, or my preferred investing and trading vehicle options, uh, you can contact me anytime. My name is David Modell, and my email address is davidmodell at gmail. Dot com. And by the way, if you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. I'm trying to constantly come out with uh, new material, stuff to really help you, the viewer, make smarter decisions and avoid making huge mistakes. If I could even help one person uh, avoid making a big mistake, whether it's with leveraged ETFs or penny stocks or binary options or any of these things that I don't really recommend, um, you know, then, then I feel that uh, this is all worth it for me. So, uh, you know, contact me anytime and thanks a lot. I hope to hear from you soon.